I never let my girlfriend forget the most memorable thing she did to me. Part 2. Hi everyone, welcome back to another Reddit cheating story. Before we start, please hit the subscribe button and click the notification bell so you won't miss another cheating story goes live. I proceeded to leave my apartment and go for a long walk. I had never felt the emotions that were coming up and didn't know how to process them. My ego felt like it was literally dismantled in front of me. I wasn't sure what to do and I was too embarrassed to tell anyone. My sadness quickly turned to anger. I knew I was gonna get my revenge. I just didn't know how yet. I was seething with rage and wanted to make sure she never recovered from this. My roommate slash teammate and best friend at the time who was sleeping on the couch in my living room, we will call him Bono, an Eastern European kid who stood 7 foot tall and was as Russian in demeanor as you can imagine. He also had an equally ridiculous RL name hence, Bono, well, Bono called me shortly after I started my walk. I answered and he asked where I was. I asked him to keep this between us, and told him what happened. He stays on the phone and goes into my room and I hear him in his Russian accent yell at her yo bitch, you cheated on op? Then I faintly hear her inaudibly say something in the background and him yelling at her to get out of the apartment. After hearing some scuffling Bono gets back on the line and says yo. She gone, come back and let's talk. I head back home and me and Bono go over what had happened. Things don't get sappy because we are both complete alpha males who both come from cultures where men don't cry and neither of us really knew what to say or do in this situation. He makes his best attempt to comfort me and says, tonight is your birthday, we gonna get fucked up and find you some sluts. Fuck her. I never liked her anyway. Oh yeah, this day was my birthday. Forgot about that part. Me and Bono go out for breakfast. I am still a little drunk. My phone is blowing up with calls and texts from Lisa. I tell her I saw everything on her phone and I can't stand to speak with her or look at her. She keeps trying to convince me to let her come to my birthday party and I make it clear I don't want her there. She clearly was concerned about exactly what Bono suggested to me earlier when me and him chatted. Lisa's entire reputation and popularity revolved around the fact that she was dating me. I think most people didn't like her in the first place but put up with her because we were together. She knew that if I acted single at my birthday party and she didn't show up everyone would know something was askew. I think Lisa was more worried about being embarrassed than our relationship. I don't remember much of what happened that night. But one of my friends sent me a little package for my birthday from California filled with some really good weed, hash, moon rocks, some pills and the devil's dandruff and I proceeded to do a glorious swan dive into an intoxicated oblivion. All I remember is sitting on my chair at the pregame for my party. There were two girls sitting on the arms of the chair and I still have a photo of that moment and I remember it vividly. We were preparing to head out. I had a few tables downtown at a popular nightclub. The booze and drugs were the only thing that made me feel normal. I had my sunglasses on and clearly had the happy loaded grin on my face. The longer you look at the photo of me on that chair, you can tell I'm hiding a huge amount of hurt. Sitting on that chair, the cocktail of drugs starts to take effect. This was the first time I ever used substances not to party but to feel better. To make me feel normal. I remember thinking, I want to feel this way for the rest of my life. I am never going to hurt like that ever again. With drugs, I have control and no one can hurt me again. Oh how ironic that turns out to be years down the line. I told my teammates and friends that me and Lisa were done when they asked why she wasn't at the party. I didn't tell them why though. I also didn't show them that I was affected by it in any way and just played it cool. I tried to focus everyone on the party ahead of us. The revenge. So this is one of those revenge stories where it was only half planned. I knew I wanted to get revenge on Lisa for hurting me so much but I kind of just improvised as opportunities came up. My original kind spirit had died on my birthday on that chair. All my morals went out the window. I never cheated in relationships therefore I believed I would never get cheated on. I realize now how dumb that is but that's what I thought at the time. I didn't care what collateral damage I caused as long as my mission to hurt Lisa as much as possible was accomplished. So continued every day of my life with this new selfish mindset. I was sitting at my computer later that next week skimming Facebook when I saw the profile of one of her track teammates on my feed. That's when I had my first vengeful idea. I decided I was going to attempt to get her teammates to bite the bait that I was about to cast out into the water. Though, I didn't have proof she hooked up with my teammates, she was clearly trying to hide conversations between them. So I was going to see how many people who are close to here I could passionately hug. Luckily I had more options than she had when cheating on me. 
A women's track team is much larger than a men's basketball team. Also much better looking. Lisa's teammate I originally spotted on my Facebook had a boyfriend but I thought, clearly everyone cheats, let's see if it's true. I proceed to do the little flirty social media dance with her. You know, the one where I like a couple of her photos, she likes a couple of mine back. I shoot her a message and bam. She's at my house in my bed about a week later. I proceed to do something similar to other teammates of hers. All on her 4x4 relay team coincidentally. Two of the three girls I passionately hugged had boyfriends and subsequently cheated on them with me which gave me some real mixed emotions. It stroked my broken ego and also made me bitter and sad. Giving me one of those women ain't shit. None of them are loyal attitudes. This is such a typical story of while fighting monsters I became a monster. This actually became my go-to strategy because it accomplished two things in my fucked up mind. It exposed a cheater but more importantly if they were willing to cheat on their boyfriends they would. A. Be more secretive about it which meant the drama that would ensue when it came out would be elevated and B. It made me feel better about Lisa cheating because it proved it wasn't me that was the problem. It was women that were the problem, I know it's fucked up but that's what I thought back then. I started to collect something from every girl that I hooked up with, like a bra, a pair of panties, or some jewelry etc., not for some creepy reason, but this is important later and was a part of my plan. Sometimes I didn't even have to try. One girl left a pair of very distinguishable shoes. I knew Lisa would know whose shoes they were. They belonged to the girl that Lisa's ex-boyfriend rebounded with after Lisa and him broke up which highly upset her because it was her friend. Now it would upset her more because that same girl slept with both of her ex-boyfriends. I especially tried to collect items if it was something that I knew Lisa could distinguish like a sweater from the women's track team with her teammate's name on it. After some time I had collected a boatload of shit. After a couple months or so, one of Lisa's teammate's boyfriends found out about me and his girlfriend and it started a big beautiful dramatic explosion of a series of events with her and her teammates. This led to all of them finding out about one another's promiscuity. The drama was massive. Even their coaches had to get involved. It got so bad. This made me feel so powerful in such an evil yet satisfying way. I fell in love with the destruction I was causing. The most awesome part about all of it was that same week, the athletics PR team had put massive posters of me all over campus promoting the next game. They were everywhere. Some of the posters took up the entire side of buildings. So Lisa and her friends had to see me all over campus every day while this drama was erupting all around them. I felt like a triumphant dictator. It was glorious and pathetic at the same time. Their coach even proceeded to have a serious meeting with the compliance department and my team's coaches. My coaches literally laughed at her saying this seems like an internal issue, but OP hasn't done anything illegal or broken any school policy so there is nothing we can do. This infuriated the women's track coach. Their team had fallen apart. Their national ranking began to plummet. Then Lisa's coach even got in trouble for being caught tearing down some of the smaller posters of me on campus in a raging temper tantrum. I loved all of it. I continued to add fuel to the fire. Posting photos of me with girls, smiling, being happy every chance I could on Facebook and Instagram. But under it all, I was bitter. I was so deep into my new mindset I had already forgotten the kind-hearted naive kid I used to be. I hated my old self because I let some girl emasculate me. I was so full of self-pity looking back at it, it's depressing. No one really knew though because I played the cool guy attitude in front of people. There are more to come. Find out the update of this story, check our channel or the description. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe and turn on the notification bell for any future cheating stories.